Hi, hi everyone. Welcome to the University of Wollongong podcast. And uh, our podcast uh, topic today is how we, our students, they move from student experience to be a scholar and how they work from studying to be a publisher and publish their work in the journals. Uh, to, my name is uh, Dr. Ibrahim. I'm one of the assistant professors at University of Wollongong, Dubai. And today I have with me uh, my best student, actually, uh, Muhammad uh, al and Arshin Imran. Uh, and uh, I, will, I would like to start first with asking Muhammad and Arshin to introduce themselves, and, uh, and then we'll start from there. Uh, hi, Dr. Ibrahim. Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you for the invitation. Uh, my name is Muhammad al I am I uh, held a Bachelor degree of nursing from Jordan. And I've completed my master's degree from the University of Wollongong. Uh, I've worked back home as an ICU CCU nurse, and then I moved to UAA and started a new journey uh, working in the EMS in, in the emergency medicine. Uh, I was, I was uh, a frontline medics and day by day learning and just teach, like learning from uh, our experience here in the country. Mm -hmm. Uh, the diversity and uh, with 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 my with my master degree, I was able to uh, get promoted from uh, frontline medics to a supervisor to a manager, and now uh, I hold a position of director of operations for. Wow, that's great news! Yeah, yeah, for a company called um, National Ambulance. It is, uh, it's the main frontline EMS service actually in the Northern Emirate, and oh. some commercial contracting. Wow! Well, congratulations yeah. on your promotion! You. Congratulations, Mohammed! Thank you, Doctor. Uh, so, so what about you, Arshin? Can you, could you please introduce yourself to us? <laughs> thank you, thank you, uh, Doctor Ibrahim. The and uh, good evening and good afternoon, because it's times to clash with that afternoon and evening as well. So, my name is Arshin, and uh, firstly, I am proud to be a nurse. And uh, as compared to the the experience with uh, Mohammed said, I belong to my own country, Pakistan. And I did my bachelor, uh, post RMBS in degree in the uh, Khan University mm -hmm. Hospital. So at that time, after the completing the bachelor's degree, I have uh, much enriched the experience of nursing, but in different department, not especially in the administrative side, but also the bedside as well, and the managerial side. Uh, as I compare here, uh, when I migrated here in the UAE, so I opt this uh, opportunity to get the advance my degree or education. So I get enrolled in the master's program in here, UOWD, University of Wollongong, Dubai. So it's interact, in, interact me that the very different uh, perspective of nursing, not in the courses we have learned in bachelor, but in University of Wollongong, I just uh, experienced that the different topics, different subjects that uh, make you difference in nursing. It's not compare, it's as, as compared to the bedside nurse, but in the different world of nursing we have introduced yeah. in Master of Nursing in yeah. here. That's why it's attract this university. So this is the, you know, quality of nursing here in yeah. University of Wollongong. Thank you. Thank you, Arshin, for, for the nice introduction. And thank yeah. you, Mohammed. It's a pleasure to have you guys here. And uh, uh, it's, it's, it's actually having you on your university. It's a nice feeling after after you finish your study. And Actually, Arshin, she started already talking about her experience yeah. with, with the University of Wollongong, and I can see how much she's excited <laughs> to share this experience. I, I would like to start with, uh, with you, Muhammad, and I would love to hear your experience studying at University of Wollongong, Dubai, and doing, doing your master's degree. We completely understand it's not an easy task to work full-time and study full-time. And uh, and the university she should uh, any university should have a nice environment to support uh, their student. Did you find that uh, inside University of Holland Dubai? And can you share more of what you experience? Yeah, uh, just speaking about my experience previously, uh, I wish to complete my master's degree from day one after I completed my bachelor, but I have not had the good uh, environment, the good opportunity to to go ahead and move on. Uh, so and that's the day where I. I was w like searching the web for a good universities in the UAE where I can just get my master's degree. And then I saw 
the University of Belonging offering the, the Master of Nursing. I visited uh, Dr. Susie, thank you to Dr. Susie, and um, she'd given me an introduction about the project, about the, the thesis and how, how the, the, the master gonna go. And as you said, doctor, um, our lifestyle as a nurses or whoever work in a healthcare uh, system is quite, our schedule is quite tough and uh, uh, hectic yeah. because it's it's too hard to find university where they can accommodate the schedule. Yeah, but luckily, uh, University of Longing were very uh, uh, welcoming and understanding for, for our situations. Um, the, the scheduling was brilliant. The timing was perfect. It suits our needs. And there was always a, a kind of, of collaborations between our assistant professor or professors and the students where we all come up with uh, decided on w when we wanted to study and this kind of flexibility is is nowhere uh, moving forward becoming a student of university for long going experiencing the environment of australia in dubai is is quite uh beautiful yeah. it's beautiful because yeah. uh, we see how the environment is different especially coming from a different background uh, in the middle east arabic country to to, to feeling that the western or the australian uh, environment is was it was perfect uh as, as Arshim mentioned, we have experienced how different is master from bachelor. Because in a, in, when, when, you, when we were bachelor, actually, we were like just, we were getting the information, we're just being, the, the, the professors were feeding us with yeah. the information. But uh, what I like here is from day one, Dr. Susie, in one of, the, one of our first lectures she mentioned, she said, now you, it's your time to put your, your, your knowledge, your experience, and add something to the academia. Because... Yeah. We have had the experience, we have had a bachelor degree, yeah, and it's now see. the time to criticize, to analyze, and to put your, to put your uh, comments. And that, that was great from day one. The, the online, the online uh, approach was, was brilliant, where everyone can interact. Mm -hmm. And I remember it was a COVID. So after we joined, like after three months, COVID hit, and it was crazy. Everyone was scared on how we can do it, but luckily, uh, the university was very adaptable and we were able to uh, use the online features which was already set in this in this uh, university and we've, we've studied majority of our study actually was online uh, it was very interactive uh, we, we never felt that we need to to be physically present because we felt we are always present online uh, during those uh, lectures yeah um yeah so it's it's, it's a fantastic oh, fantastic thank you uh, thank you Muhammad. Yeah, thank, thank you for you. sharing your your, you. your experience and and it's nice actually that you still remember this kind of words you oh, yes. you have heard from uh, from your professor that's that's great to hear and Muhammad Arshin he did share with us the the flexibility what he'd experience uh, you know during doing his master did you feel the same or did you uh, or, or your experience was different no i am perfectly and you know 100 percent agree with the uh, muhammad's points that we at that time we hit the COVID, and uh, simultaneously we all are in a you know practical life all have a different job life experiences at that time and it's very difficult uh, with the COVID and professional uh, you are doing the task simultaneously. It's very difficult. So the flexible time the Dr. Susie have given to us that, uh, and luckily at that time we are uh, lucky on the online remote learning mm -hmm. we are doing at that time with uh, our work and then studying. But it's it's been very you know hard time for us all of them because we are doing the professional life, personal life, family life, job life. So it's a mixture of your life yeah. you are experiencing at that time. So it is difficult in that point that if you are doing the advancing learning, at that time you are in that stage that you have so many tasks in your life. So it's very difficult to manage at that time the so many tasks in one at a time. So at that time we learned from the masters that you have to take break. You have to flexible, you have to uh, energize yourself, you have to change yourself in, in, in a ch challenging environment yeah, as well. Absolutely. So this is, this is the way we have learned in the master's uh, program. And more likely the program is, no doubt it's um, online, but it's encouraging others uh, if, if we are talking about the examples like forum. 
in different topics uh, we have uh, in subjects if we are talking about the forum it's a, it's a just like a question raising the concern the experiences from that forum we learn that what we have learned and what we are going to learn and what we are implement in our clinical side or administrative side so this is the mixture we are learning yeah. and it in progress it is not you know uh, discontinue at that time yes. but it is in progress yeah. so that learning is you know boost you to uh, go further in your uh, you know nursing career it's not because what i thought that nursing is not just a clinical side there is a you know huge umbrella in the nursing yeah, absolutely it's it's a research if we are now today is we are talking about the research so this is the first uh, it's my favorite topic this research is wow. so yeah. that's that's the main uh, you know potential you have to identify in each student if you are a graduate so first initially at start of the orientation you have to identify yourself where you will stand for the further so this is the <laughs> yeah message. and i th think you are sheen i'm so glad that you you both guys uh, had a nice experience uh, studying at university of Holland, dubai and uh, as as you mentioned uh, you know it's very important to not look at nursing that they can do only the clinical side but nurses now you can see nurses everywhere and research actually this is our our mission that's what we try to encourage all of our students to focus on how they can be uh, researchers and and how they can publish their work and that's that's will lead nicely to to my second point, uh, would like to like to discuss it with you guys today, and would love to share that the news, the, the recent news that you both you were successful in publishing your first systematic review. And when we think about a systematic review, systematic review is set on the top of the pyramid of the, the evidence the hierarchy of evidence, and which is it's not an easy task, by the way. And we 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 know that most most of the students normally after they finish their master's degree they feel lazy, they feel uh, they can't do any further study or work, but you did take the challenge and you invest your time, your energy to do and uh, to work harder on your topic, uh, on a new topic, a novel topic, and to publish it. And would like to, uh, would like you guys to share your experience. How th did that go? What's the challenge you did face? Uh, why, how you did choose the topic and and share show you uh, your experience and then later we will would love to hear your key messages to the other student uh would love to start with mohammed if uh, yeah yeah it's it's all right uh so basically when we completed our master degree we we all because as as we mentioned we've we've now got the chance to to say our words and uh, implement interventions and see how we're going to change our workplaces uh that's where I'm, when I was invited by uh, Ms. Arshin. Uh, thank you to, to to collaborate and work with Ms. Iman and Fatima Hashi uh, and work on, on a new topic. And knowing that we are all coming from different backgrounds, yes, we all have a bachelor degree in nursing, but that umbrella is very proud, mm -hmm. very proud with which involves different people from different discipline. Mm -hmm. And we all come up with so we usually meet at the first time and just discuss and what kind of ideas do you have what interest uh, do you have and then we just share a same interest where we can uh, start and look into literature review and find what what can we find uh yeah that's that's initially was the start and then we agreed on the topic with with you thankful dr Ibrahim. you you, you were a very My big pleasure. supporter to to us uh, you've guided us through. Uh, yes, we have completed the master degree, but this was our first uh, publication. So we we know the process, but leader has to show the way, the path. And you were a good leader. You showed us the path. You showed us how to do it Pleasure. step by step. Uh, we've ended up with uh, the questions, and then uh, Ms. Arshin led the group on assigning tasks uh, where everyone was tasked to either do literature review analysis, uh, inclusion exclusion criteria and we meet regularly just to see how we are progressing is there anything we need to modify or change uh it is interesting and uh, I'm, I'm personally thankful for for your help and this Arshin. Oh, thank you Muhammad for sharing that and actually it was a q1 journal 
which yes. is uh, which is great and it's very hard to publish in a Q1 journal. And uh, I would like to share another secret that Arshin she just received her. Uh, the, the editor reviews uh, and the reviewers comment on her second systematic review so which is uh, which is a nice feeling as well yes. that's me that if you have received the, the the feedback from the reviewers that's mean you are on the track to publish the second systematic review exactly so uh, Arshin, what do you what you can share with us on on this experience uh, I just first of all uh, thank and acknowledge to my team uh, who are not present here uh, Fatima and uh, Iman, and you are also the belonging our team, but how it the build this team, I just want to share the story. Yeah. It's a story, not just like a journey, that when we completed our uh, graduation, it, in terms of uh, we are waiting for the graduation ceremony, in that period, we are, you know, thinking about what we can do for, uh, you know, change our life. Because as I uh, talked about previously, that it's not a you know stop way so you have to continue in your journey if you want to achieve something so that time uh, we all think that what we will do uh, in our research project we can we start with the research then uh, it will help in our advanced uh, in practice of nursing as well it's not for ourselves but it's also getting the benefit from the other uh, researcher other uh, nurses or other participant or other audiences who are listening and who are reading our articles so it's it's benefit for all of them not for us as well so this is the perspective we are thinking at that time and then we started the initial topics what we will do at that time so we are uh, in you know uh, come across the sum because i have an uh, experience in icu at that time covid icu so at that time so many uh, you know challenges and uh, the the things we are experience in the critical care areas especially if we are talking about the hygiene perspective so broader than narrowing yeah. so hygiene is neglected in terms of that we are neglected the small uh, part of our body oral if we are talking about so at that time we uh, see that the, this part is neglected from the because of the uh, the time consuming maybe the lack of time staff shortage so we don't know at that time but we are assuming but when we are uh, studying exploring through the systematic review so we started with the knowledge attitude and practice of the nursing what happened so at this uh, the point we learned that okay something is missing in uh, education maybe practice maybe attitude so that's that's is lacking in somewhere yeah, so this this topic is arising from that point and then we started thinking and then we planning we meeting together but no it's it's uh, it's not you know um, hard and fast and uh, all mutual understanding of in our team that we are meeting in zoom and flexible time not uh, you know we are giving the yeah. uh, you know uh, emphasize that you have to meet on that time so we are flexible at that time so it's it's very thankful for you you have su your support That's and right. the team it's wonderful it's experience a pleasure. It's, a pleasure. <laughs> uh, it's a pleasure actually to work with both of you guys you have done a great work and and uh, thank you for acknowledging the team Fatima and Iman they have done a great work as well so uh, Guys, um, when we think about a systematic review, actually we normally, uh, we don't do systematic reviews as if you remember that what I used to teach you within the, inside the class, we don't do it only for the purpose of publishing. So doing the systematic review, it always should, should lead to a change in a practice. So uh, that's how we teach our students evidence into practice. So, so now you have published your first systematic review, second systematic review, it's coming on the way. I can see yeah. it's a mi minor comment. It's going to get published. Can yeah. you can see Ashin? She's happy. <laughs> now, how how we'd like to hear how this is going to reflect on your practice. Now, you, um, Muhammad, uh, mashallah, he's now he's good to promote it to director position. And you, Ashin, you, um, I, I know you are in the process of getting a new position as well. So, how do you think? your experience doing this research and doing this systematic reviews can be reflected on your practice. Yeah, so uh, 
basically it, it depends on in your workplace but uh, myself for example is not working in the in the hospital uh, setting i will i will look into uh, i think you you doctor working on a program where we can implement our finding into one of the hospitals in in uh, in the emirate uh, i think identifying the gap in oral health and the intersection between the oral health and cancer patient knowing that there is a gap in uh, nurses attitude nurses understanding even their healthcare professional awareness about the oral health care and how important it is for cancer patients, uh, we were able to identify this. So we know where is the problem now. Mm -hmm. And so it is, it's a good chance for us to work on two things, either educational programs where you can teach uh, those in bachelor degree universities, curriculum where you can involve those kind of things. And from an admin perspective and the leader positions, I think it's, it's now the time where in charge nurses, head nurses, We'll have to put the time and the assessment and the skill verification on, uh, on assessing their staff knowledge. Are they are they really checking? Are they knowing what's the difference? Do they know how to diagnose? Do you know how when to refer? So because yeah. you remember one of our finding is like I think only twelve percent was referring a patient to a dentist. So yeah. they might they might see it, but they don't they don't refer it. It's either because they're their, their understanding of underscoring the importance for healthcare. And we, we all know this is very connected to quality of life. So if we're thinking of a cancer patient and we all aim to improve his quality of life, especially at the palliative care stage, it's it's important to, to, to focus on, on oral health. And it's important that we can implement a program either in, in uh, bedside settings or uh, starting from uh, universities where people can teach yeah. people are looking after this so th there's a lot of room for for us to implement there's a lot of opportunities for us to impact and implement this into the community and into all hospitals in the ue as a start yeah thank you muhammad Absolutely. so what now uh, muhammad he did share how how is going to, uh, the implementation phase after doing this systematic review and, and and recently we had a discussion and muhammad he started thinking about doing systematic reviews which is uh, it kind of comes under his big umbrella which is his experience mm -hmm. as in, in management mm -hmm. and managing managing the team and leadership and and this is this is going to let him think about more specific topics which is lead uh, nicely to improve the outcome or or, or running his department uh, in the future systematic reviews can be as muhammad highlighted can be a good start point to flag the gap and identify the gap or sometime find find the most you know recent literature on the new strategies so you can use to solve problems serious problems in your department so ashin where where do you think you know how how this is going to be reflect on your practice uh i just want to add on uh, the mohammed's point in our research uh, the systematic review the topic the findings is highlighted that they need uh, lack of knowledge so they need training recommendation training so the training uh, they preferred the method by the training is the simulation. So nowadays, the simulation training through simulation with the real examples of on uh, the simulators. So it is very helpful to the nurses who are not nurses. It's not specially talking about we are nurses because it's a, it's a huge umbrella of healthcare provider. So it's included uh, the, the duty of the healthcare provided also included the doctors other staffs, the nurse technicians, all are, you know, uh, collaborative learning through this uh, practice have enhanced the outcome, the good outcome of the uh, patient. So this is our target that we have to, uh, you know, encourage the, you know, especially the hospitals, specific hospitals to implement the standardized protocols specifically for the oral health. And then if there is need to change and then update according to the evidence-based practice. Uh, recently, I just present this uh, systematic review in the conference. So with the help of your, um, you know, support, we I did it uh, on behalf of our yeah. team. So at that time, I realized that if the nurses, uh, because nurses, doctors are there in that conference. So if the listener is very uh, keen and interested this topic and they are asking 
if they this uh, project is going in the uh, some areas or some hospitals are not is there or not so i told that we are willing to uh, you know run that same project in inshallah in the com coming up in the two hospitals so that we are the pipeline uh, the for future plan but we are thinking of to implementation these uh, you know evidence based practice in our uh, clinical site so the healthcare providers give the uh, you know clear idea and uh, decreasing the rate of uh, you know health issues related to the oral health so this is the good you know yeah. opportunity yeah. to I, learn i think I, th i think to always you know attending conferences and presenting your finding that i'm so proud of you arshin and how you how you're getting feedback as well on on your project and the the feedback you're getting from people this can help you and give you the power to continue and i think i have shared with you guys that the good news that we uh, university of Long dubai they have supported our project uh with with a fund with to to develop uh the simulation part and uh, the intervention part for nurses so as as you mentioned as you mentioned we are going to use this money to develop the training part and then we're going to be implementing that in two of the united arab emirates hospitals that's good so 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 that's actually nice. uh, thanks we would, lo would love to thank the university of Long dubai for supporting research this is this is a great opportunity for for all of us, and we're still looking for external uh, grant and we're going to apply for external grant in the future. Now, I will not keep you for long. I know, I know, it's, uh, I know, you, uh, Muhammad, you're coming from Abu Dhabi. So let's let's move to uh, uh, the last the, the last thing I would like guys to hear from you now. How you can encourage other students who are currently doing their master's degree program. I'm I'm supervising some of them. They have very interested and interested interesting topics, and these topics it can be easily you know worked on and can be uh, systematic reviews which can be published. But you know finding the right time, finding the energy, it's not always you know uh, uh, easy for them. So 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 what's your what's your key messages for for our student, our post undergrad or postgrad? So yeah. would love to hear from you. Yeah, so uh, so it's 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 very important that you you deploy and implement what you've learned. And if you don't do study, if you don't research, then you're gonna end up with no direct impact on on patient care. And that's that's one of our main target to improve the patient care and deliver a best practice to our patients. Uh, so for for graduate patient for graduate uh, students, I would I would say start with. Uh, choosing the team. So start with identifying uh, a group of, of students where they share the same interest, mm -hmm. because once they have the same interest, then you're going to work perfectly. You will click on and you will work together uh, uh, effectively. Uh, and then you choose, you choose your time. And when I say choose your time, there is no perfect time. So do not wait for the perfect time. I mean, just time management. There's always a time at the weekend. There's always a time at the end of the day where you can just work on a specific topic and where you can end up. And what's the, the key lesson for me, when I when we started this, I thought I'm gonna handle a lot of things. I was like, they're gonna bombard me with a lot of tasks. And Dr. Abraham will ask me, <laughs> Archie will ask me. And then I just realized that I, everyone in the group has a specific task. Yeah. And then there is a deadline and the deadline is always flexible based on our lifestyle. And you will feel that you are actually once the team start to put a deadline and everyone has its own task, you feel challenged that, you know what, I'm going to finish my task. And once you complete your task and meet on a weekly basis, you will just see how it's progressing, how you're you're moving forward. And you will just get interested for uh, when I'm going to publish. I, I need to publish this. And so so just time management, choose your team and just have, have the power and dedication to do it because... Uh, Without without our dedication and just uh, determining that you're gonna do it, it's you're gonna fail. So just keep pushing. Thank you, thank you, Muhammad, Absolutely. for sh for sharing these nice nice messages. Uh, we can feel this coming from your from your heart, it is. That, which is which is great <laughs> to it is. to sense that. Arshin, now I think also you have you have a lot of experience with uh, what you you was leading the team. Yes. So 
can you what's your, what which kind of messages you can share with uh, our graduate students first i just add on the uh, mohammed's um, point of view that uh, this is good that you have to create your team uh, but understanding is very important the mutual understanding of uh, each member is very important and you have to understand their perspective as well their life as well you are not forced to do this one so you by professionally you are you know develop the team and then meet accordingly and fix the time task these are very key points you have to do in the team to build the run and research area and two messages it's a it's a it's just like a philosophical quote i'm just want to <laughs> quote here yeah. so that being uh, behind the every success it's just like uh, is an unseen hardest part hard working sacrifices and persistence so you will feel your success or you will get success when you get you know fall down fail if you are feeling this kind of uh, you know uh, in your uh, uh, life then you will build your success or you will get success as well otherwise you if you are just thinking that i will get success in small ta- task no it will not happen overnight so you have to do hard work and you will get fail i'm just giving the example that in this uh, simple st- systematic review we have rejected two times but at that time what we have get the feedback the feedback it's motivate us okay there is something we have to improve no not taking the negative aspect of the, this feedback that oh my god what can we do it's not uh, publishing and then this disheartening disheartens your uh, you know motivation and your hard work at that time it stops you but if you are thinking like a positive way that no this feedback okay we will improve it we will uh, you know we will going to publish but we this this will happen and then it will improve the uh, nurses life nurses or healthcare providers also if you are thinking this aspect then we can achieve our goal as well and uh, i want i want just highlight that life always will be hardest part and when you will come in the uh, crossover to the new area or new la- level of your life don't be discouraged don't get discouraged about this one that if you fail you will the uh, bumpings in your life humps in your life will, will going on so this is the key key message that you have to continue your success even if you have feel f- uh, failure if you are getting faced the failure thing you s- sit stand and then go run <laughs> I think uh, I, th- I, th- I think I don't have better than what you have shared, guys, to close this podcast. And uh, actually, you have shared a very nice key messages for our graduate student. Uh, it's actually it was a pleasure to have you here today, and thank you for joining uh, joining me in this podcast. Uh, I wish you all the best with your thank you. career, with your uh, future education. and uh, and if you with your future plans as well because i know you will have also different plans so uh, i would love to have you all the time here at your university university of holland dubai uh, you can come and visit and and work with us it's a pleasure for all of us it's a pleasure for us thank you thank you mohammed thank you thank, thank you, you dr ibrahim